The belief in an afterlife or continuity of consciousness after physical death is as old as history and present in all cultures. Ancient Egyptians believed that when the body died, parts of its soul went to the kingdom of the dead. The process was complex. A mummified body was essential. There was judgment requiring a sin-free heart. Spells, passwords, and incantations from the Book of the Dead facilitated the passage into the next realm. In India, Hindus regarded life and death as part of the journey of the soul in cycles of reincarnation. Thus the soul never died, only transitioned from one form to another. In ancient Greece, Hermes, the messenger of the gods, took the soul of a dead person to the underworld ruled by Hades. If a fee was paid to the ferryman, the soul was transported across the river Styx for judgment. A virtuous life was the ticket to the Elysium Fields, a very nice place for the retired soul. A sinful life led to the fields of punishment, not so nice. Characteristically, the Romans essentially adopted the Greek model of the afterlife, with Hades becoming known as Pluto. The Greco-Roman model of good and bad afterlife experiences based on the earthly life was adopted by the Christians, among others. In this tradition, the destiny of the soul is an eternity in either heaven or hell. We could go on listing the afterlife possibilities for the soul in various cultures throughout history. There are endless variations on these themes. Instead, let us conclude this overview by knowing the position of modern atheistic humanism. There is no soul. When we die, that's it. No soul, no consciousness, nothingness. Well, that certainly beats an eternity in hell for sure. From the metaphysical perspective of the Edgar Cayce readings, the destiny of each soul on earth is to complete the educational process that was begun here many thousands of years ago when souls undertook involution, the downward movement into physical forms. Incarnation in flesh bodies on earth was not necessarily part of the Creator's plan, and yet free-willed souls could and did make that choice. Having entered into flesh bodies on earth, the lessons of flesh must be completed in order for the soul to move on with its journey. While on earth, the soul must make the best of the opportunity to grow and develop and make the world a better place for having been here. And yet, reincarnated lifetimes of experience on earth has never been the complete story of the soul's journey through materiality. The flight of the soul within this universe includes not only the planets of this solar system, but distant star systems as well. In between earthly incarnations, there are sojourns in other experiences of consciousness that resemble the depictions put forth in the Egyptian and Greco-Roman systems. There is even a borderland realm of consciousness that functions as an in-between way station for souls in transition. Blended together, this progression of activity yields a tapestry of soul development in space, time, and patience, woven into the very fabric of the universe as the Akashic Record. Thus the destiny of the soul includes experiences among the stars as it makes its way back to the source. Indeed, the soul is a citizen of the universe. Jesus' parable of the prodigal son tells the story of a rebellious lad that takes flight from his father, travels to distant realms, and loses touch as he involves himself in worldly adventures. When things go badly and he bottoms out, he realizes his mistake and desires a restoration of the relationship that he had in the beginning. Finally, he makes his way back to his father, a wiser and perhaps better companion for the experience. At least that's the impression one gains from Jesus' parable as the father celebrates the return of the prodigal son. 
The parable is the story of each soul making its way through eternity, finding its way back to the source. The destiny of the soul is to return to full companionship as an equal co-creator with God, as was intended in the beginning. Thus the purpose of creation is fulfilled as each soul comes to know itself to be itself, and yet one with the whole, one with God.